All right, let's see here. Uh, all right, I, I said before this was a uh, 620 hub adapter, okay? Uh, according to the numbers, it is. Now, this is probably a uh, an issue uh, with trying to use the 620 adapter. I had always thought that it was possible to use it. I know the splines match up. That's fine. But what's missing here, and I don't know if we can uh, see it here, because this darn camera probably focused on the background again, but... Uh, um, Look at, whoa, look at the, uh, the, the diameter here, okay? This is 521 one. You look at the diameter right here on the top of this boss where my finger's touching, how much bigger it is than this. There is no taper in here to anchor on that cone, okay? So what's happening is it's going down. The splines are okay, but it is not fitting down on top of that taper. Uh, this would have to be machined or reamed out to have a taper in order to work. Now, the 521 one... Uh, let's uh, see what it does. Oh, there we go. I was like, what the heck? Okay. So, notice the screws they have in there, and that is factory. That's your blinker canceling. Those are down nice and close. Now, let's throw the, uh, let's throw the bell on there. And if we went up to 9 sixteenths, wow, we still got a big, uh, space there. Not nice. Uh... I wouldn't want that gap. Um, that can be addressed if you're shortening the steering column anyway. But if you're not shortening the steering column, uh, about your only other option, okay, is... We'll turn this back around so you can see the, the thing here. This is a possibility, I believe. Um, when you have your blinker switch on here, okay, we talked, we talked about that screw going in that slot. Okay, now this would still be fairly stable uh, all the way up until the clamp hits the end of the column here. Okay, uh, so the, the clamp could be tightened down here, okay, uh, and obviously you would want to turn it and clock it. Um, so let's just hold it there. Let me... Uh, let me put, see if I can run the screw in just enough to put a little mark. Yeah, I think hopefully it made a mark. We'll see. Uh, take that back off. Yep, it made a mark. And hopefully this is focused okay and everything. It made a mark right there. So we could literally go in with whatever size drill bit it would take to, to mimic this uh, radius and this hole and this width and drill a hole right there. And then that way the pin goes in and locks it, okay? Because you don't really want to trust the clamp. Uh, you know, it may move, stuff like that. That's slotted so it can be adjusted. Now, let's check one more thing here. Let's put this, uh, let's put this back on. I'm going to turn it this way, mainly because uh, I'm not putting the pin in, and I want to get the clamp down tight enough so it doesn't move. So let's go back to the 521. Okay, my blinker canceling uh, pieces are, screws are hitting the thing. So, so I can bring it up to there. Now I could shorten those, I could shorten those slightly and that just may be part of the ticket. But let's hold it right there for a second. That's down. Let's put the bell on it. See how much gap we still have there? Okay. Yeah. So if we cut... Well, let's measure it here real quick. Uh, it's... It's just under... Uh, it's about 7 sixteenths. Just under a half inch. I could shorten those two screws 7 sixteenths of an inch and then do what I said and move this up uh, to where I got the gap I wanted and then tighten that screw down to make, leave a mark. Uh, you know, obviously oriented around here where it's supposed to be. Um, and do that. So, yeah, modifications. Now, this adapter is no longer available anyway. So let's... Uh, uh, I'm not sure if I want to machine a 620 adapter. I know I don't want to. Um, but let's look at something else here real quick. All right, what I did here was... Uh, I went ahead and put the screw back in, the uh, pin, 
loosened the clamp back up and slid it all the way up. And so you can see we've got a nice narrow gap here. Okay, this is with the 521 steering thing. You also notice too that our spring's not uh, touching, so this horn wouldn't work uh, at all. Uh, but let's uh, let's click a bink blinker on, turn that, see how that popped that back off? We'll go the other way here, and that pin just popped it right off. Uh, so the pins are engaging just fine. I can see, I don't know if you can. Um, so you can see the pin inside there, and it's way up on top of the, uh, or down far enough to be engaged without any problem. You know, it could be, it could be up there and still engaged. So, uh, you know, the biggest issues is uh, the 620 adapter is not tapered, will not go down over those cones. Okay, well, let's, and... Let's take this. Uh, let's take this thing off for just a second. All right, the 620. Wow, it goes all it goes all the way down. That's way too far. You're not going to be able to tighten it down or anything like that. It's got to be, it's got to be up here. So, uh, not good. Maybe something from the 620 shaft will transfer over. Uh, I don't know. Um, you know, I'm not as concerned with uh, that. At least not at this point in time, enough to uh, to mess with that. So it's just answering a couple of questions here. If the uh, if you can even see that on the camera, uh, basically uh, we'll take that back. I'll just put put it down here real quick. See how far that goes down? Not good. It needs to be right about there, uh, so it can tighten down. So I'm not going to address that at this point. I got a couple other things I want to. Uh, mess with them running out of time uh so yeah let's right, move a couple on. people uh you know I've, I've got these hubs 521 which is a whole lot lighter uh than the, the 320 hubs the 320 hubs are actually pretty stout not not quite sure why but uh uh anyway uh i hang on to these i literally i just cut the two spokes of the steering wheel off uh it's it's all fairly soft the the steel bar is cast into the aluminum or whatever it is it's uh, the hubs made of. The reason I kept it, and here's an example of it, this is a uh, steering wheel off, uh, I want to say a Fiat, I got it from Krabby One on Ratson, um, and uh, let's uh, find the orientation, okay. So I have the, the uh, horn button and all that kind of stuff and everything all fit back on and all that kind of stuff too so uh you know it was literally this three spoke wheel in uh melvin uh that was uh an nl320 that <laughs> it's a whole other story that's uh, there's a thread on rats in somewhere so anyway i had uh you can see the 320 hub here in the center okay and then i machined an aluminum rim uh ring around the outside here and from the looks of it it was for something else, because I didn't put the knurling in here, uh, and I don't remember what it came from, so apparently it was a uh, another piece of aluminum for something else. Uh, so anyway, what I did was I, I modified it, and I cut away the 320 hub, and then drilled a bunch of holes in there and countersunk it, and you can see those on the back side here. Uh, and then I drilled and tapped for the steering wheel, and you can see those sticking out around the uh, side here and that stuff. And then I had to machine the inside of this, uh, to uh, fit. So, uh, anyway, that was that's kind of why I'm saving the the hubs. Uh, at some point in time, I will figure out a way to make a uh, an adapter for all the guys who want to put custom rims on, custom steering wheels on. But uh, you can't find the adapters anymore. So, I, it's on the project list, but it's way way down. So I'm pretty much done addressing the whole steering wheel issue. This is going to be with regards to uh, steering column shortening. Okay. Um, what? Uh, so so you got a bit of room there. I took the screws out of the 521 adapter because uh, they uh, they were uh, harshing my buzz. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so. So this has a little bit of room there, but see, we still got this nasty ass gap here, okay? Um, so what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna go ahead and put it back down to the bottom here, and uh, just for demonstration purposes, what we're, what we're looking to do here is when we cut, we have to cut the outside tube, 
and while I'm thinking about it, the outside tube gets cut. Uh, you can only cut it about three inches, okay? Uh, let me back this back up. I guess it, uh, that's all the farther it goes. Okay, so from, from here to the dashboard, okay, you can only get about three inches. And then this gets to the point where it's going to start touching. Maybe three and a half. You'll have to measure that. Uh, so let's just work with a, a nice easy number, three inches. We're going to talk about shortening this column three inches. Uh, and effectively what we're doing now, if you have a steering wheel, steering wheel adapter, and you have this big ass gap here, when you shorten the column, this is the time to address it. Reason being is, let's say we cut the outside tube three inches and we cut the shaft three inches we're still going to have the same nasty ass gap. But if we cut the outer tube three inches and we cut the inner shaft three and a half, we end up with that. Okay, so you want to put together, you want to have your steering wheel and your hub adapter and everything all figured out first. If you're using stock and you've got a nice uh, gap there and that's the way it's going to sit, fine, you can cut them both the same. But I'll tell you this too, uh, actually I could probably show you, I'll just uh, go pull up, uh, go sit in Paula's car and uh, give you an idea, or truck and give we'll you an idea. this works or not. Because <laughs> I can't see the, the camera at all. So there's a, there's a little bit of gap here. I could probably go in uh, another half an inch, quarter inch. If you want to cut your plastic, you can go in even a little further. Um, not guys who are tall, you know, six foot. I mean, their legs are always up like this, um, and, you know, and their arms are real scrunched. Now I got a nice, uh, nice reach here with this. This column's been shortened three inches. Now I have a creative fill in here since uh, the adapters uh, didn't match right, and I didn't figure out the cut the column one length and cut the tube the other length to account for that. I didn't figure that out until uh, uh, after the fact. I thought, hey, just you know, cut them both three inches. So. What happens here is, is gives you an idea how much bigger the, the stock wheel is. Well, you know, the stock wheel was up here. When it goes down at an angle, it pulls it down closer to the, to the, uh, the seat. Okay. Uh, you can still do it, but when we drove with it, um, we had a real hard time getting under the steering column and in, in the seat and stuff like that. So it doesn't seem quite so bad right now. Uh, not quite sure why. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is the same size as the 521. Maybe the 521 is a little bigger. I don't know. Anyway, uh, uh, that's that's something to keep in mind. If you're going to do a shortened steering column with a stock wheel, it will pull the wheel down toward your knees more, and you'll have less lap room. Okay, you'll end up with a bit more gut room. You know, if you're uh, blessed with a shape like mine. Um, otherwise, just keep it in mind. I will do a little here with the, the clearance and that stuff without, uh, see if I can pan around fairly smoothly. Uh, give you an idea how much gap I've got there. And it was shortened three inches. So you can see there's still a little bit more room, but uh, uh, not a whole lot. And if you want to cut your uh, speedometer housing, uh, you could definitely go in shorter, but uh, you know, that's completely your call. All right, let's start taking the uh, steering column apart here, okay? And, and I don't know how well this is going to oh, show up on, uh, on the camera or whatever, so we'll take some other close-ups and stuff like that. But basically, the shaft just comes out of the tube here. And I've always said that there are uh, uh, what do I want to call them? Uh, there was like spring washers up inside here that kind of kept the uh, oil from splashing up inside. And either they discontinued them or that was something different on the uh, other one. But uh, let's see, can we, uh, yeah, see there's nothing, uh, nothing down inside there. The restriction is all the way at the far end. Uh, this, this actually goes up inside here. Um, let's turn it at an angle here. Uh, where's... Uh, don't bother being prepared. 
video is cheap. Okay, so I'm hooking it on there. If you can see that, that means that goes in there about three inches, okay? So it's not just simply welded right here on the end. Uh, the only restriction all the way down at the end on, on this end is this rubber plug, okay? Uh, that rubber plug comes out easy enough. Um, it feels like there may be some kind of steel uh, pushing in there. I'll have to check that out a little bit more. But, uh, now, when I shortened my column, what I did was uh, um, we we put this piece we put this piece in the lathe here, okay, and cut this weld off. Uh, I don't my uh, my lathe uh, isn't big enough to do that. So what I could do is I could come up here and I could cut off three inches if that's the measurement I'm going to use, and then I could chuck it in the lathe there, cut it, pull it off and then push this back up into the uh, piece that's left um, and then weld it back on. Uh, that, uh, that's one way to do it. That's not a real easy way. Somebody else brought it to my attention after the fact. Part of the challenge was, is that, uh, there's a random hole in here for some reason, <laughs> is this strap right here that holds down the uh, uh, e-brake. Okay, what happens is, if I take three inches off here, then the whole shaft moves that way. It no longer hits my e-brake, okay? So, you can, you can, you got a couple other options. You can either section three, eight, three inches out anywhere in the tube, okay? Or you can take the three inches off the end here and then using a drill bit and drill like three little slots and then use a little rat tail file to connect them, you could recreate this slot. As I pointed out before, if you Redrill this hole to, uh, you know, to position the blinker assembly better. Uh, then you know that's by far your best option. You know, this this is just a, a single piece of tube here. You can pull the rubber out and, and cut it off and plug it back in wherever you want. Okay. Uh, so the outer tube, really pretty easy. You know, you could do it with a, a pipe cutter, a uh, pipe cutter and a drill, and not have to do any welding or hacksawing or anything uh, on the outer tube. The shaft, the inner shaft on the other hand is a, is a different story. Now, I don't remember this. It's been, it's been so many years since uh, did the other one. Let's, uh, let's uh, zoom in here a bit and get a better, uh, better look at this. Okay, what, what I'm looking at here is Okay, they did not machine this ball screw on to the end of that really long ass shaft. Okay, all the heat right here, the heat marks, they welded this, okay, and then machined it back together. And there's a little number here and stuff like that. Now, you know, I'd have to go pull another column apart. I don't have another one um, to see. I don't remember this. On the other one, you know, maybe there's a chance that uh, this got fixed, repaired, modified. Uh, maybe that is the factory way. Maybe somebody else has a uh, uh, steering column they could yank apart and, and see. But anyway, that it's been cut and modified there once, okay? Uh, I don't know that I would necessarily want to do it there again. Now, this shaft will easily fit in my lathe. I could either, I could do it down at this end to where I fed all the really long bar all the way through and, uh, you know, did the machine work here. Okay, the problem is, is that what I need to do is I need to cut it and then I need to machine uh, a step in it more or less so that then I can create a butt connector and then I can squeeze it back together on that butt connector. Well, I can't machine this side. I, well, you know, actually, if I machined, if I put it in there and machined both the, this whole section together for the butt connector, cut it in half, then I could come back here and, and uh, cut my three, three and a half inches off or whatever and machine it down uh, as well. That would work. Then I could join the two back together and this wouldn't matter. The, the issue is, is when I did this with, uh, with the other guy, we did it all the way up at this end, okay? And we did it up in here somewhere. And the reason being was is that we put the heavy ball screw in hanging out the end of his lathe. 
and we fed all this through so that just this part poked through the chuck. Uh, and that worked out fine. Um, that's probably the preferred way because then, you know, the, the ball screw, as long as you're not spinning too fast, any wobble out here on the ball screw end, uh, the chuck is going to hold it. Okay, so the chuck's grabbing it here. Um, you're not really going to get a whole lot of movement out here. Um, I also think, just purely opinion here, um, cutting it up here is still my preferred method for the reason that I have all the rest of this shaft to act as a spring or a shock absorber, okay? Apparently, you know, because I don't necessarily think that, you know, my welding is going to be on par with this. Uh, no clue. Uh, apparently, you know, they uh, welded that together. That wasn't any issue. And you can see the, the lathe marks in this piece that aren't in this piece. Uh, so it's definitely welded, uh, welded together. Uh, back to the spring bit. Down here, you know, when this gets jammed and shocked, all of this mass is going to be resisting it all the way up to your steering. Now, it's going to spring from there up that way, uh, but there's still going to be a good bit of shock down here. Uh, my thought originally was that, you know, we put it up there, then there's all that shaft to absorb. Uh, I think it's really kind of six of one, half a dozen of the other, and, you know, I, I almost wonder if it might be better just to just come in here and machine this area and, and, you know, cut this crap out and just weld it back together with the uh, butt joint and that stuff. Uh, oh, there, there we go. <laughs> here, here's a part of the issue, is the diameter of this in here, okay? Uh, whatever butt connector was on here would have to fit inside here, especially if it's down within three inches of this, okay? Uh, since the tube comes on from the other end, any butt connector you put in there has to be smaller than this uh, diameter. So just keep that in mind. We built my butt connector and then had to put it all back in the lathe once the whole shaft was welded back together and turn it back down some more because uh, it wouldn't fit in. So, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I think that's pretty much it for the setup. Now the question is, is do I do it? Well, I thought as long as I'm... Got it all out and I'm playing with it. I went ahead and took the, uh, and, uh, try not to leave, uh, chuck keys in the chuck. Because, you know, you, then you don't notice it and you turn the damn thing on and you're shit out of luck. Okay, so, yeah, this will not fit in the end there. I didn't figure it would. Uh, I was just, uh, sizing it up. That way I didn't have to measure it. Okay, so, now we've got kind of two options here. And let me take the... Let me take the bearing off here. Uh, now I've got to remember to put that bearing back on before the butt connector. So uh, make sure you uh, tell me. So, all right, we're already going through the end there. So this is it. Now, granted, I'd have to try to hold something out here. Definitely got to move the uh, definitely got to move the belt sander there because it's uh, right over the end of the belt sander. But uh, um. Let's, uh, let's play. I'll take a long way around. Okay, so let's just say we can do it right here, just to, to kind of help balance it. I don't really want a huge amount of uh, shaft hanging out there. Okay, see it lift up the end there? Just uh, make sure it's too tight now. I'm going to turn this way down to the minimum there, 70. What I want to see is how much wobble we get here and how much wobble we get there. Now, on this lathe, I have a, a switch here I can just bump. It's a momentary. Uh, that's pretty slow. Let's go ahead and turn it on and see. So, there's a little wow here. I'm trying to... Uh, pull it one way or the other, push down on that stuff and see if it changes how that end is. And then I've, then I've got an idea, you know, cutting force is going to uh, move this. But this lathe's big enough that uh, it looks like it's handling it. Um, I don't know that I would necessarily uh, take a long ass time to do it that slow. Let's kick it up to 300. I'm going to watch. If that end starts swinging around too bad, then, you know, I'm going to shut it right back off. But uh, let's see. 
You know, that's still not too bad. That's not bad at all. And I could live with, uh, I could live with 300. So, might just do that. Um, I got a machine, a butt connector, make sure I got the metal and that kind of stuff. God, the uh, DOM tubing that uh, Morrison had over here the other day would be perfect. Okay, um, let's uh, undo this and feed it in from the other direction. Let's see, see if I like that uh, any better. Uh, you know, I get I get kind of worried about uh, how long these videos are and that stuff, and then I realize, wait, I'm not the one sitting around watching them. <laughs> Or some of the owners got to sit around and process them. So I think we're probably going to have to open this up a bit more. Ooh. Yeah, I'm clear of the, the jaw there. Um, wow. Just barely getting it in there. I don't like to leave these openings, you know, my tapers and that stuff open because uh, it uh, lets dirt get in there and stuff like that. So, all right, let's, uh, we're still on 300. That's pretty stout there. Let's turn it on. Oh, that spins much nicer. The other advantage, too, is, is uh, I can come in here with a uh, live center. So now when I go to machine the, uh, the step in here for the uh, inside bore of the uh, butt connector, I can do that uh, a lot more rigidly. Now I could do that with the other end too actually because there is a dimple on the other end. Um, so I just simply have to decide which way I want to do it. There's almost zero weight swinging around out there. Uh, this maintains the weight better. Uh, I'll have to think about that. Oops. Man, I always manage to kick the camera or something. All right, I went out to the shed, grabbed a couple of uh, chunks of steel here. Now, I could uh, try to get in there with the calipers and measure that. <laughs> but, you know, uh, that one doesn't fit. So that's obviously big enough. Uh, the other one I have is even bigger diameter. And... Uh, no point in turning any more metal off than uh, I have to. So, let's see here. This is... Oh, it's an inch and an eighth. Um, inch and an eighth. And the shaft is about 690. Okay. So... I don't know if you can see that or not. That's... Uh, that's going to leave us whew, 3 sixteenths of an inch of sidewall there easy. And that's not counting the fact that I'm going to turn the other one down to... Uh, I'm going to turn it down to like 600 before I weld it on. So this basically needs a skim cut to fit inside there. And this is going to get uh, bored out. Uh, yeah, I could even take it down probably to... Uh, probably take it down to half an inch, but I don't think I want to take it down any more than I need to. I only want to turn the steering shaft enough to uh, get a precision dimension that I can fit this to. Okay, so uh, uh, I have my uh, chunk of steel now.